Let it be known that this was not my idea. That is one nerdy pasta dough. Hello. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Marion and welcome to Marion's Test Kitchen. In this episode, I'm gonna be attempting to make a fancy three course Italian dinner in a bread maker. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whose job was it? Was this? <laughs> For today's episode, I'm proud to say I've partnered with Panasonic and we're gonna be using their bread maker to cook all the things. Okay, we know that a bread maker can cook amazing bread, right? But can it make other things? Can I make like an entire starter main course dessert situation using the bread maker? Things like butter. Could I make cheese? Oh my goodness, that would be exciting to test out. So there's like a jam setting on this bread maker, which I've used before to make jam. It's really good. but could I use that setting as like a slow cooking kind of function to make like a slow braised something? And then I want to make some sort of dessert. I, I think I need to do a few tests first of all before I figure out exactly what kind of dessert I want to make. But this is fun. Let's make the things. Let's make all the things, guys. <laughs> So for my starter, I kind of want to have that like Italian restaurant vibe where you sit down and your waiter brings you your warm homemade bread and you get like house churned butter and that kind of thing. The question is, can I make butter using my bread maker? Let's test it out. Oh, I'm very excited about this. <laughs> This is my little bucket. If you take a look in here, you can see that there's like a little paddle attachment. Now that's gonna spin around and I'm hoping that that will act like a churner. To make the butter, I'm going to add cream and salt into the bucket. I'm gonna place the bucket in the bread maker and select the bread kneading function. This bread maker has um, quite a few different functions. There are auto functions, like to auto bake bread, you can make pizza, there's gluten free options here as well. But what I need is one of the manual settings. And that's really cool because you can have more control over what's happening in your bread maker when you've got both auto and manual functions. So I'm gonna use the manual bread kneading function. So that's gonna make that little paddle spin around and hopefully turn my butter. So I just need to, need to turn the power on. <laughs> Cause that would help. I mean, what is this? Oh. Dax, whose job was this? Was this? <laughs> I don't even know. There's not even a power <laughs> Chapter one, starter, take two with electricity. <laughs> so what I need here is the bread kneading function and then start. Okay, that sounds good. Oh, oh, it's going faster. Uh, this is where the action's gonna happen, I reckon. When you're making butter, what you're aiming to get to is a situation when you've got like the butter solid and then you've got the butter milk, which is like the liquid that comes out when the butter forms. That was very untechnical way of describing butter being made. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's all the buttermilk splashing around. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So if you have a look in here, all of that liquid there is the buttermilk. So what we need to do now is like you wash the butter in water and that's gonna remove the leftover milk solids from that firm butter. So I'm gonna pour off that excess buttermilk. See, the cool thing about making your own butter is you get buttermilk. Buttermilk fried chicken, buttermilk pancakes. So you just wanna squeeze the butter and get as much liquid out as possible. Oh my goodness, this is so fun. <laughs> Okay, I need to keep washing this in some clean water. So I'm gonna put in another bowl, some more water. <laughs> I know. Everyone's laughing at me. It's the way you hold the bowl when your hands are dirty. <laughs> oh my God, I'm literally, I'm just getting so buttery. I just wanna shape it into this nice little tin here, I think. It's gonna give us a bit more of that fancy kind of vibe. We made butter. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I wanna see what it tastes like though. So I know it's a bit weird to like try butter on its own, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh my goodness, that's so good. So I mean, this has literally just got me thinking about so many things. Like I have butter now, because I'm obviously gonna have bread and butter for my starter, but I could use this butter in a cake, um, in my dessert. I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge to firm up and then let's make our bread. 
For my bread, I've decided to go a little bit fancy. I'm gonna make a Mediterranean olive loaf. Now the special thing about this bread recipe is I have like a little cheats sourdough starter. It's not quite sourdough, but it's a starter first of all, which will give us an extra element of flavor, a slight little bit of sour tang in our bread loaf. So to make the starter, we just need flour, yeast, and water. I'm gonna mix the starter in the bread maker and then I'm gonna let it rest for four hours. Now what I need to do is add the rest of the dough ingredients. I need flour, salt, olive oil, and water. So the really cool thing about this particular bread maker is it has a dispenser, both for yeast and also for like nuts or raisins or sultanas, or in my case, olives. Now I've never used this function before, so I thought it would be really cool to test it out. If you didn't have this function, you could put everything in the bread maker at once, but this apparently will give us a better, even distribution of the ingredients. Oh no, I put an olive in the yeast dispenser. <laughs> and my yeast goes into the yeast dispenser. And so the point of doing the yeast like this is that the machine will know exactly when to put the yeast in during the whole mixing process. Now I'm gonna test out one of these auto functions here. So I'm gonna go straight to my auto basic bread function, press start, and the bread maker will do the rest. <gasps> Yay, look at that. Oh, I can smell that olive oil and the olives that smells amazing. Let's see how easily I can get this out. Can you guys hear how crusty that sounds? I could do that all day. Anyway, <laughs> just appreciation moment for my bread. And then this is the butter. So I unmolded it and took the plastic wrap off. And I think it looks so fancy like that. <laughs> Look at how evenly those olives are distributed in there. I love the texture of that. It looks so lovely and fluffy. Okay, butter. I'm like someone who needs a lot of butter. <laughs> That's not too much, is it? No. That is so cool. That bread, the texture of it is amazing. It's fluffy. It's kind of crusty on the outside. That little bit of extra flavor from the olives, the olive oil is so good. And that butter, wow. Starter, I reckon. We have nailed it. Mm. Oh, Dax, you're gonna love this. Should we break and just uh, have a little snack? <laughs> so, main course. We're doing a fancy Italian dinner. So I'm thinking I wanna make a pasta main course. Now, I have looked up a fair few things and I know I can make a pasta dough in here. But the other thing I need to test out is what kind of pasta sauce can I make? Now, my bread maker has a jam function. That jam function is like a slow simmering cook kind of function. So why don't we see if the bread maker can do like a slow braise? All right, so I am gonna pop all of my ingredients for like a beef ragu into my bucket here. So I have my beef, nice little small-ish cubes, onion, garlic, carrot, eggplant, thyme, tomato paste, whole peeled tin tomatoes, tomato passata as well, some red wine. Now this is optional. You could just add extra water instead. Some water. And here's another very non-traditional ingredient, but I think it really kind of boosts the flavor if you like. I'm gonna put in some beef stock cubes. Okay, so I need my jam function. Maximum time, it's two hours 30. Okay, press start, let's come back and see. So it's only been an hour and a half, but I can like smell the ragu cooking. I'm too impatient to wait, so I wanna go and have a look and see how it's going. Oh my goodness, look at that. I mean, last time we saw that, it was just like a jumble of ingredients. I think that actual paddle thing, even though it's so small, it's mixed everything, look. Let me have a look here. Um, that beef is pretty tender. <laughs> like it's so soft. So texture wise, I think we're kind of getting there. But you know what I was thinking about while this was cooking was, um, you know, traditionally with an Italian ragu, you often add milk at the end. You know, make things a little bit more mellow, cut through the acidity of the tomato. It kind of, I don't know, kind of makes everything a bit more lush. So I'm gonna do that. And then close the lid and let this guy keep going. All right, so it's currently smelling amazing in here. What I'm hoping for is that we have a really lovely thick ragu, that our beef is like beautifully tender. I mean, this is what you want with a ragu. So let's come in here and have a look. Ooh, look at that. Look at that sauce. It looks so thick. It's so tender. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, it's like completely just melt in your mouth. Amazing. So I have my ragu, which I'm really happy with. Now I need to make the pasta. For my pasta dough, I need flour, salt, eggs, egg yolks, and olive oil. I'm gonna put the dough into the bread maker, select the bread kneading function, and let it knead for 20 minutes. So we're nearly at the 20 minute mark. I just wanna have a look and see how this is kneading in here because I'm interested to see what kind of job the bread maker has done. Look at how lovely that dough looks. And it's actually doing the kneading because oftentimes when I'm like at home and I'm making pasta, I'm like, mm, that'll do. <laughs> Ah, oh, the texture of it's really good. If you like to make pasta at home, you would like totally nerd out over the texture of that. Okay, so just like with any kind of pasta dough that you make in a regular way, you really does need to have a rest before you roll it out. So I'm just gonna wrap it up and then this needs to go into the fridge. Now let's roll out the pasta dough. To roll out the pasta dough, I'm gonna scatter a little bit of semolina on the bench, add a little bit of flour to the top of the dough and then roll it out to one millimeter thick. I'm gonna slice it into pappardelle sized strips. I think that's so cool, that looks great. Then I'll place the pasta onto a drying rack ready to cook. Look at that. I mean, that looks amazing. Look at that, really lovely texture. Now check this out, because I reckon this is gonna be awesome. Wow. <laughs> I'm genuinely excited. Olive oil, you have to have a little bit of olive oil. Cheese, and I mean, Look at that, that is so cool. I made all of that in here. I'm like ridiculously excited. No one can stop me now. I mean, that is so ridiculous. I am totally winning today. This main course is delicious. Dax, you need to eat some. Come on, put it down, put the camera down, come on. Nice. I, mean, I, I think it's super cool. I don't wanna cloud your judgment though. Mm. That's amazing. <laughs> so we are starter, main course, done. I'm gonna get on to dessert. I am gonna make a cake, but there is one thing that I wanna test out in the bread maker that I think is really exciting. I wanna test out if I can make cheese in the bread maker, and if I can, then that will form the basis of my cake dessert. So should we do it? Let's make cheese, hopefully. <laughs> So I'm gonna make a very simple kind of cheese. We're gonna go with a ricotta. I just need some milk. Why, uh, uh, let me fix that. Don't put that in the edit. <laughs> I'm gonna add some salt. So I'm gonna go jam function, cause that's my heating function. And then let's go. Oh, this is what I was looking for. I was looking for like a little bit of that kind of foamy business on the top that tells me the milk's been heating up. Now I can go in with my lemon juice and then we want to keep it stirring, so that's why my paddle attachment there is really useful. We want to keep it stirring until the curds form. I wonder how long this would take. So let's come back in here and have a look. I did close it for a few minutes in the hopes that would like speed things up. I think we're kind of cottage cheese kind of texture was what I was looking for. Yeah, I just don't think that's thick enough. I reckon we need to give it another 10 minutes or so. Put it in 10 minutes. Let's see what's happening now. So I can like see some curds here. I think we should give it a go. So what we need to do is basically strain away the kind of the whey, I guess. So we've got curds and you've got whey and we want to capture the cheese curds in our little cheesecloth here and the rest of the liquid should drain away. Cool, I think it's working. <laughs> there's stuff coming out and there's stuff staying in there. <laughs> so I guess that's, I guess that's working. So see how you can see on the edges here, this cheese starting to like form. The curds are sort of sticking together. That's going to set together beautifully, I think. Yeah, it's yum. Tastes like ricotta. <laughs> so I have a little plastic strainer here as well because I want to strain out a little more of that liquid while my ricotta is resting in the fridge. All right, so I'm pretty excited about the cheese. I mean, that was one of the things that I really wanted to achieve today. Now I'm kind of thinking, okay, well, what's my dessert going to be? Like, you know, I love that thing at the end of a dinner at an Italian restaurant, you get your limoncello, you're sitting there relaxing. Um, so I'm thinking lemons. Now I've got the ricotta. So lemon ricotta goes together so beautifully. We're gonna make a lemon and ricotta cake. That's what I reckon and it's gonna be good. I think this guy can manage a cake, I'm pretty sure. For the cake batter, I'm using some softened butter, the one I made earlier, some buttermilk also from the butter I made earlier, 
milk and three lightly whisked eggs. So here's my ricotta that I've had chilling in the fridge. It's nice and cool now. It's only been like about an hour or so. Check that out. Nice and firm, still a little soft, which is nice. I'm gonna try it again. It's actually really yum. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna add this into the rest of my wet ingredients here. I'm just gonna crumble it up a little and I'm gonna pop these into the bread maker. Let's try eight minutes. I think that should be good. All right, so this is looking pretty much how I was hoping it would look. We're still always gonna be a little bit kind of curdy in there just because of the nature of, of the mix that we've got in the ricotta cheese, but everything is really well mixed. So I'm feeling pretty confident about putting my dry ingredients in now. Just got some self-raising flour, baking powder, caster sugar, lemon zest, and vanilla paste. I'm gonna pop that in the bread maker and mix it for another five minutes. Oh happening. Look at that. Look at our cake batter. Looks really good. I'm going to empty this out into my bowl here because I would normally spray my tin if I was going to be baking this in the oven. So I want to do the same thing. Just a little bit of spray here and I think it really gives the cake a nice sort of dark crust on the outside to have that little bit of extra oil. The good thing also about doing this is I can take this little paddle out because this comes out. So it can come out. Okay. Now, I've got a bake setting here that I can use. So I'm gonna choose that one and I want an hour and 20. Great. It's pretty cool that you don't need to like preheat it or anything like an oven. I like that, it's easy. <laughs> Dax, you don't get any cake. <laughs> Is everyone ready for the big reveal? Let's see, <gasps> there we go. I mean, look at that. You can tell it's like all kind of sticky, a bit like caramelized there on the outside. Will it come out though is always <laughs> the question. Please, oh, it came, st oh, <laughs> that was easy. Wow, I love that. Look at that color. It smells like deeply caramelly and really yum. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. I think that texture looks incredibly lush and just really like kind of shiny and sticky. I like it. But you know what I need though? I need some extra bits because I want to make this fancy, right? So how about if I pop this here and then I get myself a little bit of cream and then how about this? We put some lemon curd on there. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this. We're gonna get in here and try this cake now. I don't care what you say, Dax, I'm eating it now. Dax typically likes to get shots of things before I eat them, but he's not gonna get a shot of this one because I'm just gonna eat it. That is so good. The lemon flavor is really lovely. But you know what's nice? Is that that lovely ricotta flavor in the background and knowing that I made the ricotta myself and the butter myself, that's really cool. I don't think there is anything about this cake that could be better. I mean, maybe next time I would try to make my own cream. <laughs> I think we made enough today though. <laughs> The thing that I love about these test kitchen days is you just never really know where you're gonna end up <laughs> at the end. I know that I've made some really delicious food, but along the way, I've really put my bread maker to the test in ways that maybe like, you know, I didn't think were possible, like churning butter or making cheese. You know, these are the kinds of things that I think really, not just fun, but really useful to test out. Because I mean, if you've got a bread making appliance and it can do all these other wonderful things, then why not? do them. I just want to eat more of these things. <laughs> but I figured that I should really get someone to come and eat with me because like fancy dinner on your own is a bit sad. <laughs> Cherie, do you want to come eat some things? Sure. Dax has already had bolognese so he can wait till after. <laughs> I'm starving. This is you actually are starving. Aren't you? I actually am starving. <laughs> Cherie forgot her lunch today so she's, just, she's my volunteer. So I get a three course meal instead. <laughs> I'll put on a bit more than you, but anyway. <laughs> I don't think you can ever have too much, sure. I agree. But it makes everything mm. better. Mm. Mm. And it tastes like it has been slow cooking for hours. I'm never bringing my own lunch again. Mmm. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That is nice. divine and the lemon curd on top is delicious. Mm -hmm. Yum. And we put, I put ricotta in there and I made that ricotta, the cheese, so. Oh wow. Isn't that, I feel so, I feel so chuffed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you should. Did you know that I made that cheese? <laughs> Everyone yeah. at the dinner party would be like, shut up Mary, we know you made the cheese. All right, okay. you're fantastic, I did it. Do you want real time slow-mo? Yeah. Thank you.
Sherry's at 50 frames. <laughs> Mary is at like 100. 